Yo, what's up everyone? Today is June 12th, 2016. Um, and it's time to, uh, it's time to depilate. Depilation station. Um, today's brush that we're going to go with, um, we're going with the Morrison Forndren 3XL. Uh, Morrison Forndren, well, hold on a second. Three XL, finest, nice brush, nice, nice little brush, and it does feel little, um, but whatever. That's just the way it is, and I'm okay with that. Um, today's soap, today's soap is going to be Bufflehead, and yes, as always, Nashville, Tennessee. Today's scent that we're going with is going to be good old Inglenook. <clears throat> it's been a bit since I've used this, but uh, that's because I don't really have too much of it. Let's go ahead and get this uh, brush loaded up. Let's go ahead and load it up with the soap that's pretty good. Just load it up, if you don't believe me. Done a couple test lathers with this brush, but... Uh, this will be the first for real go with it. <clears throat> Bufflehead, man, this stuff, this stuff is good. And um, for those of you, you know, that don't have any and aren't too happy about it, keep the faith, man. It's, it's there'll be some more trust. I don't know anything. I don't know anything specific, but I know there'll be more, and uh, it's absolutely worth the wait. This is just. Utterly fantastic stuff. The fact that it comes from the Jewel of the South just, man, I, that just kind of is uh, icing on the cake, as they say. <clears throat> Speaking of Nashville, uh, I wish I could be there this weekend. Hold on a second, let me, uh, let me get this lather, let me get this lather situated. Good brush. It doesn't have the world, it doesn't have like a ton of backbone, but it does have enough backbone to make it enjoyable and a good amount of, uh, a good amount of scrub. I'm not feeling anything pokey, and I haven't felt anything pokey with this brush, um, you know, on the test ladders. And what I mean by pokey, um, you know, I don't know if you've ever used a brush that, uh, it just feels like it has little needles in it, you know? And uh, as you're building lather on your skin, you'll feel it every now and again, and it sucks. That's the quickest way for me to throw a brush away. And by throwing it away, I mean selling it or trading it. <clears throat> Excuse me. This buffle head does not, it's not difficult to lather at all. And uh, it skips, it skips the really foamy, stupid phase. And uh, you get a usable lather, usable lather, excuse me, pretty quickly with this stuff. And oh, what quality lather it is. This is some of the best post shave, uh, some of the best post shave feel in the business as well. I'm happy for Justin. He, uh, he went through a lot of uh, a lot of different formulations to get this stuff just right. I'm happy I've been able to. I've been happy. I'm happy I should say that I've been fortunate to be able to catch it when it's on sale. And don't be afraid to buy used ones, people. Come on, man. Especially for ones that have been discontinued. How else are you gonna get it? All right. I think I. Uh, I don't think this is gonna get any more mega than it is now. Mmm, <clears throat> stuff smells good. The traditional knock, woo, the traditional knock on these buffle head soaps is that uh, the scent strength really isn't all that mega. Um, which this one, this one does seem to be a little bit, uh, does seem to have a little bit more uh, scent to it. Today's razor is going to be a Wolfman WR-10C 
MK2, aka the Turned Up Wolfman. This one has the uh, ex this one has the um, larger blade gap, 0.74 millimeters. <clears throat> Very chill weekend, like I was mentioning earlier about Nashville, I wish I was there this weekend. Um, this weekend is the CMAs. CMA stands for Country Music Awards. I don't like, I should say I don't listen to country music, I don't have a problem with it either. Um, but, it's really cool because... It's a gigantic party in the neighborhood, and uh, I do something similar every year for the past uh, seven years, I think it has been now, six or seven years. So, you know, to have a bunch of people come through the city for a celebration of the music that, you know, was... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if country came from Nashville, but it certainly has a serious home in Nashville. Um, it's dope, man. All the tourists everywhere are just having a blast, and what with uh, the explosive growth in the city of Nashville, I have a feeling this year is even better. They uh, they always close off x amount of blocks on Broadway. Um, this year they blocked it they blocked it from 7th Avenue um, 7th and Broadway e east which means it's blocked all the way to the river and if I remember correctly I think last year it was only blocked to uh, 5th Avenue so it's definitely a bigger party this year because, uh, you know, CMA is also uh, like a big music festival kind of thing in downtown. They take over downtown, put up stages everywhere. And like I said, it's just full of people, man. It's full of people that are so happy to be, so happy to be in my, in my, uh, in my city and in my neighborhood. And again, even though, even though I don't like country music, I always, uh, I always walk down there and check it out. It was good, man. So, yeah, I'm kind of bummed out that I'm not there for it this year. You know, all these things that are happening in downtown Nashville. I used to, you know, even though I wouldn't, uh, even though I wouldn't participate in them, I would always walk down and have a look around. I almost felt like a chaperone or something. But it's funny, because every time I did walk around downtown... Tourists always would ask me for directions, and I think it's funny that they would ask me. And I guess um, I don't know. I guess I just looked like a li like a local, like I lived there, which I always thought was pretty funny. But I'll say this: every time, if they did ask me for anything while they were, while they were in my neighborhood, I certainly gave them a good impression of. Uh, I did what I could, I should say, to be a good ambassador of the city. So I'm going to stop talking about that before I start crying. I've been looking at cars this weekend. For those of you that don't know. In addition to really liking uh, Bavarian Motor Works' products, I am also a Porsche fanboy. Big time. Big time. And I used to not be. So, there's a car that Porsche released recently. People have started taking delivery of them this week. The reviews are starting to, uh... Well, I don't know if people are starting to take delivery of them or if just, like, the press has gotten their hands on some. <clears throat> but the reviews... The reviews are out there. I haven't found any video reviews. But I have found a video of some, uh... I don't remember what site it is, but they, uh, Porsche gave them one, and they're on the Autobahn doing 200 miles an hour in a Porsche 911R. 
So the Porsche 911 R is like the ultimate double mega ultra old school Porsche. It's the current chassis, and this soap smells so good, you guys. It's the current chassis, and uh, Lee, this is a monster brush. It's the current chassis. Um, Naturally aspirated, which is kind of not a thing these days anymore. Anywhere, anywhere I should say. Even Porsches. All Porsche 911s are turbos now. Which is weird, to say the least. Because, used to be, when you said Porsche 911 turbo, that means you had the big boy, all-wheel drive, flat six with the turbocharged engine. Now, like I said, all Porsches are turbo, except the 911R. And if I, I think I remember reading the other day that uh, I think I remember reading yesterday, the other day that uh, all of them have the PDK transmission, which is the du dual clutch manual. With the paddles behind the steering wheel. But not the 911R. The 911R has that six speed manual Porsche transmission, not the seven speed manual, which is kind of crazy to think that there's a seven speed manual in this world anyway. But they were offering one. <sighs> Unfortunately, the 911R is a very limited production model. Um, also, it's $200,000. There's that part too. But that thing is beautiful. The ones that I've seen have been white with red stripes, and the interior is so classy. The seats have houndstooth on them, and they look so, so good. Damn, they look good. So, yeah, the 911R is kind of what's up. So yeah, I've been drooling over that car all weekend. Speaking of cars, I have to get new tires on mine. They're asymmetrical. So they can't be rotated and the back tires last me about 10,000 miles and it sucks. Uh, I've never used tire rack before and I think I'm going to go with tire rack this time. And probably get them installed next weekend. <clears throat> I was talking to a friend. I'm kind of all over the place today. I was talking to a friend that I made uh, from the uh, from the shave community yesterday, and uh, he was saying he kind of feels the need to get into the uh, into the social media aspect of everything, and. Uh, I hope you've thought about what I told you the other day, dude. And man, this stuff smells delicious. And I don't mean delicious in a uh, gourmand sort of way at all.
if I remember correctly, this one was done specifically for the Facebook group, The Shave Market. <clears throat> oh, and also something that I kind of touched on earlier. The general lightness of the scents of uh, Bufflehead soaps. For the one that um, that Justin made for the Soap Commander raffle um, winning, he changed his process a little bit, and it resulted in a substantially stronger scented soap. Um, ooh, got myself. Um, but he didn't use more scent, uh, you know, scent oils. So something else to look forward to, you guys. Mmm, I think I got myself right there. Show sure enough. That's right. It's no big deal. I've actually gotten myself way worse on the lip meat than that. It's a pimple. One second, let me wash off here. Oh man, the post shave on this stuff. You know, if I didn't really crave that alcohol burn after a shave, this, there is absolutely no reason to use aftershave after using these soaps. And it's that duck fat. Very good. Very, very good, Justin. Um, but yeah, I was going to tell you guys about uh, Zach was asking me about, uh, you know, about this razor. And uh, the, um, <clears throat> even though it does have a larger blade gap, the reason that this one is more, or what that does... Um, in addition to not only increasing the blade gap, but it also increases the blade exposure. And that's what makes this razor so, uh, that's what makes this razor so efficient, is how much of the blade edge it puts on your face. I don't like using this razor on Sundays. Or I should say when I record videos because I do have to be a little bit more careful with it, but the, the resulting shave that I get is really, really good. <clears throat> so yeah. Zach, that's what's up with this uh, with this razor. You asked about the uh, comparison to the R41. R41 is a the R41 is a is a jerky teenager compared to that to that razor. It just isn't anywhere nearly composed. But it's good for acne. All right. I think that's pretty much it. Let me wash my face off. very 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 good um, today's aftershave is going to be uh, in keeping with the shave market theme we've got Chatillon Luxe's TSM which of course stands for the shave market Fougere first go with this one I've had it for a while oh that's nice I just haven't uh, haven't gotten around to using it yet but I am today and I'm sharing it with you guys 
Oh, that smells delightful. Wow. That's a very green and alive smelling fougere. <clears throat> well done, Sean and crew. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what's up. Oh man, this stuff smells nice. Feels good too. Doesn't burn a whole lot. I don't know if that's due to my excellent technique or what, but it does brace a little bit, but it doesn't burn like most alcohol splashes do. And with that, that's it. I hope you guys, uh, hope you guys have been well. I hope you'll be well. Um, I'll see you guys, see you guys in uh, probably next week. If not, then not too long after that. Peace, everyone. Have a good day.